Uh, joining me is uh, Lois Conley from the Griot Museum of Black History. She was in the piece we just did, and I was impressed enough. I said, well, let's bring her on the table because I think she's got more to say. Michael Allen, uh, he's been on the show before, director of the Preservation Research Office, also at the very beginning of this story, digging into what was going on and, and why it was going on. And Sal Martinez, executive director of Community Renewal and Development Incorporated. Michael, I'm going to start with you in part because uh, you started to piece things together early on. Uh, some of the criticisms, some of the concerns. Obviously, you know, I said there's promise, there's pitfalls here. Uh, there's also a lot of concerns. Uh, let's, let's lay out some of those concerns. Right. I think um, the size of the project, the amount of subsidy, um, the track record of large subsidized projects. I mean, the last time a large amount of money was spent in this part of North St. Louis uh, with a big amount of clearance, we got Pruitt Igo. Not exactly the poster child of success. Um, coupled with that was um, the acquisition, the neglect of historic buildings, tactics of buying up blocks that some people called block busting, the threat of eminent, eminent domain, um, you know, concerns about the historic preservation of important buildings, uh, and encroachment upon pockets of growth. I mean, we saw in the 2010 census that the north side neighborhood growing the fastest was Old North St. Louis, and St. Louis Place actually, to its credit, was right behind there. Uh, all this was happening without this project. So people in those communities who were part of more grassroots organic efforts thought, is this thing going to knock us out of the water? So I get these, I get these concerns, and I mean, uh, I think about these things, and I think about um, uh, groundbreaking on the Bottle District. Uh, with, uh, you know, I, I'm always distrustful of artists' renditions of anything, because <laughs> any artist can draw anything about yeah. anything, right? Um, and that's a different kinds of, kind of a story. So let me, let me uh, ask you guys to weigh in a little bit. I get the concerns. Do you see specific reasons to think that some of those concerns uh, will be played out? Or is uh, Paul McKee uh, uh, addressing some of those answers? Well, I think Paul McKee is very serious about his intent to redevelop this area in question. And personally, I've seen developments not nearly as big as this, but developments that dare to dream about a better community come to fruition. Uh, had the pleasure of serving as chairman of the St. Louis Housing Authority for almost a decade. And there was a development called Renaissance Place at Grand uh, that was built uh, about 10 years ago. And people said the old Blue Meyer housing uh, development, that that community could never be revitalized and redeveloped. And through grass grassroots organizing, bringing in public resources and private investment, we were able to transform that community to a healthy, vibrant area. And uh, I think we can replicate that on a much larger scale with North Side Regeneration, working with Paul McKee, the residents and the stakeholders in the community. The question always is, and Lawson would ask you this, is he listening? I think he's listening. I, I've personally been in a number of uh, community meetings with Paul. I was with Paul today. Uh, I'm a member of the North Side Workforce Coalition. And so there were uh, several agencies that are part of that, Slate, Better Family Life, uh, Rankin Tech, and, and uh, many others. And so we're talking about creating boots on the ground opportunities and opportunities for minority and women owned companies. And uh, he understands and has embraced the uh, ideal of grassroots development. Lois, your, uh, your museum is right there on St. Louis Avenue. You're sort of in the, in the middle of things as we were walking around the museum and pointing out uh, some of the really nice remaining buildings, mm -hmm. what, uh, visually nice. I don't know how they are inside. I don't know how the plumbing and the electric work is. Um, but other things that clearly you said, well, this, this has to go. Uh, I'll ask you the same question. Do you get a sense that uh, Paul McKee is listening to the community? Because that's what people were saying. You've got, you can't come in here without listening to us. I think that he is listening. I don't know that he listens often enough. I don't think he is a, as, approachable, as approachable as he could be uh, with individuals. Uh, group meetings and public hearings are great, but I think there are people who would prefer to have had, to have had more individual meetings with him. I do think, however, that he is sincere in his um, intent, as, as Sal has said, to try to do a good job for the community as a whole. And when you do that in such a large project, there's certainly going to be some people who are not going to be happy. There are going to be some people who are going to come out in a way that they had not hoped to come out. They are going to have to move. They are going to lose some properties. But for the larger, in the larger scheme of things, I think the project that he is proposing is a good one. It is, fr it is frightening and scary to many people who are not there at the table and who feel they don't have some input. You know, some of the Twitter comments that we're getting tonight um, have addressed something I think that came up early on, this 
suburban developer versus an urban developer, how different and how worrisome is it that, of course, he's, he's been working on this for, for quite some time, so he's not exactly new to it, and he got mm -hmm. through the Board of Aldermen, mm -hmm. which is a trick in itself, right? But, uh, uh, Michael, what about this idea of a, of a, um, a, a cornfield developer coming into um, city neighborhoods? Well, frankly, I'm not really worried about what he's going to build because he doesn't know what he's going to build yet. So uh, the renderings he has shown are very urban, they're very attractive. I'm not putting a lot of stock in that either because he's going to have to find uh, partners to build these things, people like Richard Barron or other private developers. Uh, what I'm more worried about is uh, this, Im the impact of this project on other housing stocks, namely the rest of North St. Louis, parts of South St. Louis. If this project is going to basically pull in all the public incentives for housing development for new construction in a, in a region that has a very low demand and housing oversupply, what's going to happen to O'Fallon Park, Walnut Park, The Ville, Gravoy Park, and Dutchtown, areas that are struggling to stabilize dense housing stocks and populations? Yeah. And we're going to be talking about that with uh Another group in a little bit. So I saw you shaking your head, and I'm not sure if, which way it was up and down or back well, and forth. Well, I, I, right, I, I love Michael Allen. He's a friend of mine. Uh, I think uh -oh. uh, I think I development. <laughs> I think development is development. I mean, there have been a number of suburban developers that have done development in the city of St. Louis. I think it's a market-driven effort. Uh, I, I, the city of St. Louis has certain standards and design guidelines that any builder that would come in would have to follow. Uh, the community has the opportunity to give input on that process to determine, at least in their minds, what they would like uh, for this housing stock to look like. And so I think whatever builders, whatever developers would come in and partner with Paul and be a part of this North Side Regeneration effort, uh, they would be doing the type of development that uh, would satisfy the community's expectations. Yeah, and I'm looking at, you know, we talked about um, Mill Creek. That always comes up. Uh, Pruitt Igo comes up. Uh, I said in the piece that for a lot of reasons this isn't Mill Creek, and I think for a lot of reasons it's not Pruitt I go. But tell me why you think it, it it's a relevant uh, thing to bring up at this point. Well, I think it's relevant because of the amount of uh, public subsidy and the scale of the project. Um, I think and yet that it's not one. Pl I mean, it, it's sort of like. You know, people didn't complain, for example, about buying up land for IKEA. For you know, that was a one-spot thing. Pruitt-Igoe was huge. Right. Uh, is it thinking big? Well, thinking too big think, is the problem. I think the problem is thinking about solving social problems like poverty, unemployment, and crime in terms of architecture, in terms of real estate development. Um, but we are talking jobs too, isn't? Isn't at least in the meetings, right? Yeah, hopefully. But right. at, and again, I guess there's some discussion about to be had about what that really means. Um, maybe there will be some temporary jobs. Maybe there will be some permanent jobs. But will they be jobs for people who are affected by the development? Will those folks, even who are affected by the development, be able to move back into the area, as an example, if they chose to do so? Could they afford to do that? I mean, there's still so many uncertainties about the project, and I think those are the things that keep people a little bit on the edge of their seats because they just don't know. And again, I'm not even sure that Mr. McKee knows. It's, it's a long project, a yeah, long-term project. It's, it's a huge project, and I don't know how he could know all of those answers at this point. Yeah, and I, I do want to remind people that it, we're, we're talking about some sort of groundbreaking sort of work being starting in June, but we're really talking about a long-term project and a number of different projects. So there's just so many questions about um, uh, maybe, you know, again, I, 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 I always look skeptically at artist conceptions of anything. I also look skeptically at phase one, phase two, and phase three because yeah. sometimes we never get past phase yeah, one. And I think a, another issue for some, for many people, is that issue of control. One, the control of so much being in the hands of one person. That's right. frightening. Yeah, we're gonna.